fair weather prophets, ear ticklers, and those with itching ears. Was 2020 the year of perfect vision you'd hope it would be? Or are you still drowning in disappointment? How many prophets lied about 2020 being the year of such and such? How many seers couldn't see the monolith known as COVID-19? Or the dispensational fever dream of a globalist takeover? How many people who claim to regularly talk to God in heaven did God keep this a secret from? Maybe it's because their God is on the toilet. Maybe it's because devils are not omniscient. Regardless, many people miss their marks this year. I, for one, had planned to take my wife on our first vacation. We haven't had the money for six years or the time to spare to get away. Well-timed car troubles, visiting an out-of-state family, and living below the poverty line adds up to lots of pinned interests that we have to daydream about over romantic dollar store candle lit dinners of ramen noodles and bottom shelf wine. <laughs> this was going to be our big year. Then we found ourselves out of work, barely affording our bills. Go to the beach? No, only Northam's allowed to do that this summer. Without a mask, mind you. And so we sighed and focused on the needs at hand. No big deal. In God's good providence, we are currently finding ourselves, this past week, quarantined with next to no symptoms. This wasn't how I planned on spending my vacation time that I'd saved up through work. But here we are, enjoying our gingerbread wax melt, staying in, enjoying fancy meals of sautéed turkey burger and beans because selections are getting limited at the grocery store. So be it. Our bellies are full of food, our hearts full of smiles, and our home full of love. And the three stooges, our cats, known as Chewbacca, Ray, and Gandalf the Grey. Our church continued to meet, and we used common sense and decency. Some people fist bump, some shake hands, some wear masks, others don't. All in all, 2020 has been a year full of blessings. This isn't the case for many, however, and that's what I've come here to address. Age is just a number, or so they say. When the clock strikes midnight and we all watch that virtual ball drop in front of a bunch of cardboard cutout stock images of people having a great time, many of us will sigh, some will cheer, and many will post selfies saying, New Year, New Me. The clock will turn from 11.59 p.m. to 12 o'clock a.m., and everyone will cheer that we survived 2020, that we somehow made it out of the woods, but we haven't. When January 1st, 2021 begins, it is just a new day with the same problems. Your finances haven't changed. Your job status won't change. COVID restrictions may increase, but they will not have decreased. Losses of freedoms will only increase and will not decrease. And all the division, fear-mongering, big tech censorship, suppression of free speech, media bias, and hatred that permeates our nation will still be festering. You will be a day closer to dying. You will be the oldest you've ever been. You will see a new decade birthed in the image of the beast that came before it. The same people will remain unsaved. COVID numbers will not go away. And as the clock hits 2021, it will be as though we've taken our 2000th and 21st stroke in the middle of the Pacific Ocean in the midst of a tsunami. We've made it nowhere. And the longer you live and the more you strive, the closer you get to enduring the fury of the storm that will one day drag us all down to the place of death. Nothing changes except the approaches, maybe, of false prophets who claim that with enough faith they can cure all manner of diseases. It's funny. Is Bethel's school of witchcraft and wizardry still closed for COVID? Or have they finally conjured up enough faith in seed sowing? It's a shame, really. This was really their chance to shine. At least they will have more graves of the sick to suck spiritual blessings from. Am I right? I digress. We survived 2020 and guess what? You're probably still depressed, oppressed, and suppressed. Or at the very least, surrounded by a horde of kicked dogs who desire your tail between your legs as well. There is no new you. Just a new number at the end of the date signed on your next Trump check. For those of you who believe in yourself, congratulations. Yourself helplessly floated through the mire with the rest of us. Yourself was powerless to save you from a microscopic germ. Yourself probably masked up to protect yourself. So what exactly is it that you believe in? You are powerless. Do you believe in your ability to continue eating feces without retching? That isn't a talent. You're nothing to be proud of. 
Maybe, as many say, your trust in humanity was restored. Was it, though? Was it really? Let me ask you this. Do you trust your opposing political party with your future? People can't be believed in either. And it's time we shake off the fairy dust of the last 10 years of parading through the rise of sodomy and international abortion and see that this is just the beginning of a reckoning. But you see, for me and many others like me, 2020 was barely an inconvenience. We have been praying that God would bring revival or destruction for years. While many were off playing games, ignoring the storm on the horizon, we prepared our hearts for the inevitable. Though none of us could have predicted what 2020 was to bring, it has merely helped us settle our hearts and prepare for days ahead. We have peace. Some of us wear masks, some do not. Some of us will get vaccinated, some will not. Some are more compliant with their overlords than others. But we all share one thing in common. We have peace. Peace that probably passes your understanding. You can attribute it to small-mindedness, neglect of science, or our bigoted natures. But the fact remains that though we have lost loved ones as well, been denied funeral attendances and hospital visitations like the rest of the world, we stand. We are not defeated. We're only a little bit upset. We have joy. Why are we different? Why? And this is because Christ is our hope, not the date on a calendar. There is no need for new starts, new me's, or fresh slates. Christ has washed us white as snow. And whether the globalists, sickness, poverty, war, or lack of oxygen wipe us from existence, we rejoice. For there is nothing that we have endured in 2020 or will endure in years ahead that can compare to the glory that awaits us. Death is our doorway to hope. We live every day. We have been given as an assignment to love God and to love our neighbor and to serve him with fear and trembling and to share his good news. And when we're done, we will struggle no more. We will sweat no more. We will not suffer pain anymore. There is coming a day when Christ will wipe away every tear from our eyes and even death will be no more. That is a mountain-sized pillow to rest our head on. But this is only for those who have bent the knee to Christ. If you have not dropped your arms, abandoned the shelter of sin, and ran to Christ and surrender, then know this. The problems you faced in 2020 were just a whiff of the eternal sulfur and gnashing of teeth coming your way. Oh, you might say, so you resort to fear-mongering. Well, my friends, as the wise King Solomon once said, fear is the beginning of knowledge. Thank you for tuning in. You have been caught in the briar.